This is Vito. He is a member of the Fire Tank Pirates with a big gun, a long tongue, and not much else of note. So as a result, when the going gets tough, he finds himself hiding very oddly behind the subscribe button for the Grand Line review. But unfortunately for Vito, this button won't actually protect him from, well, anything. However, pressing it will result in regular One Piece content being uploaded straight into his YouTube feed. Hello and welcome to the Grand Line Review, your source for everything One Piece and more specifically sagas in minutes. The series that aims to equip you with the basic knowledge to leap into the wilderness of One Piece. And today we are on the verge of catching up with modern events as we step into the latest and what is sure to be the longest saga in the entire series being the Yonko Saga. The Yonko Saga is the ninth in the series, which currently consists of four arcs, one of which is still ongoing at the time of this recording, being Wano. And so I am unable to give you an accurate assessment of chapters and episodes, at this point anyway. However, currently it is startlingly approaching the 200 chapter mark, so we are quite possibly looking at the longest and most earth-shaking saga in the series thus far. And diving into things immediately following the events of Dressrosa, one faction of the Straw Hats are ferried to the island of Zo to meet up with the rest of their crew, only to discover that the quote-unquote island is actually a gigantic elephant that houses an entire civilization on top of it. And after scaling the elephant, the Straw Hats are met with one of the most beautiful landscapes ever featured in the series, as well as swiftly encounter the Mink Tribe, a species of humanoid mammals who are native to Zo. And after a somewhat shaky start, it is revealed that the Straw Hats are considered something of a heroic presence by the Minks, which has to do with the actions of the other half of their crew, who during the events of Dressrosa had arrived on the island led by Sanji, only to discover Zo and its citizens on the verge of death following a grand battle. Now this is because very recently a man by the name of Jack, a key member of the Beast Pirates who are captained by none other than Emperor of the Sea, Kaido, who just a sidebar for a second, you may remember as the man who Luffy and Law initially formed an alliance to take down. In any case, Jack was charged with hunting down a ninja from the land of Wano by the name of Raizo. Now Raizo is a comrade of Kinemon, Momonosuke, and Kanjiro, an assortment of very strange individuals that we have been collecting over the last few arcs, with their ultimate purpose to become clear shortly. However, the Minks vehemently denied that Raizo was on the island, and a battle lasting five days and nights would commence, with Jack and his force engaging in brutal combat with the Mink tribe, led by Duke Inurashi during the day and Master Nekomamushi at night. But after five days, both sides found themselves within a stalemate, and so Jack resorted to using a chemical weapon, which interestingly enough was actually developed by Caesar Clown, and it pretty much instantaneously resulted in the resounding defeat of the Mink tribe. But before he could cause too much damage, Jack received word that Don Quixote do Flamingo had been defeated on Dressrosa by Monkey D. Luffy. And that was important to say the least, because do Flamingo was responsible for trafficking weapons and artificial devil fruits, and so Jack Jack set off to reclaim Doflamingo from the Marines, at which point he was met in battle by now Inspector General Sengoku, Admiral Fujitora, and Vice Admiral Suru, which resulted in Jack's reported death. Spoiler so, he did not die. And so the Sanji faction of the Straw Hats arrived after this, and given that they just so happened to have Caesar Clown with them as a prisoner, they forced him to develop a cure for his own chemical weapon, and thus saved the entirety of the Ming tribe. Our problems most certainly do not end there though, because with the exit of one Emperor of the Sea, another came to take their place, with Pakoms and Kapong Gangbej arriving on the island in the name of Big Mom. And this team was charged with the task of abducting Sanji of all people, which was quite the surprise, with the plan being to forcibly have him marry one of Big Mom's daughters, known as Charlotte Pudding. Now this is because Sanji Sanji has a ton of history that we were not aware of up until now, and is in fact a former prince of the German kingdom led by his father, Vin Smoke Judge, who offered Sanji up to form an alliance with the Big Mom Pirates. More on that later though. And while we're here, Beige also took Caesar as well, because unfortunately for this clown, Big Mom just so happens to have business with him as well. Oh, and finally, Beige also ended up betraying Pacoms by shooting him in the back because Beige is very sneaky and he has some plans of his own to implement. Pacoms would of course recover on Zo, which was his home island, as he himself is a mink, and the Straw Hats would eventually come to be re United Sans Sanji. Now, after Ginemon and Kandro eventually made it up the elephant because they encountered a, uh, how shall we put this, a series of misfortunes, the Mink tribe then revealed that Raizo is indeed on the island and that he is safe, meaning that each and every one of them endured harsh torture and potential death just to keep this ninja hidden. And when we are taken to see Raizo, not only do we encounter the strangest Wano citizen yet, but also a very funky red poneglyph known as a road poneglyph, one of only four in the world, which when combined will reveal the location of the legendary island Raft tell. At this point, we also finally get to understand why we've been collecting these weird Wano people, because their country had been taken over by Kaido, and they are searching for allies to help them bring him down, which Luffy does eventually agree to do, along with Trafalgar Law and the Mink tribe. And as such, the ninja pirate mink samurai alliance 
was born. But immediately after this, alive and well, Jack would attempt to return to Zoe, only to be promptly struck down by the trunk of Zunisha in one of the most glorious pieces of action within One Piece. But we aren't headed to Wano just yet because we still have a little bit of a Sanji problem to solve, which sees Luffy, Nami, Brook, and Chopper deciding to embark into the territory of Big Mom in order to reclaim him. And on this trip, they are also going to be taking Pagoms, a member of the Big Mom Pirates, to guide them, which also results in a mink by the name of Pedro coming along in order to keep Pacoms in line. Oh, and very, very sneakily, another mink named Carrot snuck aboard Thousand Sunny and only made her presence known after they had departed. And so the Sanji retrieval team said their goodbyes to the Dress Rosa Straw Hat faction, and they promised to meet up again on Wano to implement their plan to take down Kaido, which leads us into the next arc. On their way to Whole Cake Island, the home territory of Big Mom, situated within the greater empire of Totaland, our retrieval team encounter a ship transporting two members of the Vinsmoke family, being Vinsmoke Yonji and Vinsmoke Reiju, Sanji's younger brother and older sister respectively. Reiju then uses her abilities to save Luffy's life after he poisoned himself with his own cooking because... Luffy, and Yonji very predictably fell immediately in love with Nami, and the two vessels then parted ways. The Thousand Sunny does then go on to enter Totterland, disembarking firstly on Kakao Island, where they actually meet the girl in question, Charlotte Pudding, the woman whom Sanji is forcibly betrothed to. And she seems like quite a nice lady, to be honest, even going so far as to give the Straw Hats a super special secret route to take into Whole Cake Island, which they do end up using, although it lands them squarely in the territory of the Seducing Woods, where the team are assailed by Charlotte Brule and Charlotte Cracker. And this is where things would split, with Chopper and Carrot being caught in Brule's mirror world, but Combs having been captured earlier by Capone Gang Beige, while Brooke and Pedro went off in search of Big Mom's Road Poneglyph, leaving only Luffy and Nami to face off directly against Cracker, one of Big Mom's sweet commanders, and thus one of the most powerful combatants of the entire crew. However, the combination of Luffy and Nami would prove superior to this, and after 11 hours of fighting, Cracker was defeated, which prompted the Big Mom pirates to muster a supreme force to march on Luffy. In the meantime, Sanji was having something of a family reunion, which was rapidly becoming violent, when he engaged in combat with two of his brothers and his father. And here we also begin to learn more about Sanji's history as the rest of his siblings are genetically modified superhumans, with Sanji being the only child who was born quote unquote normal due to the self-sacrificial actions of his late mother Sora. This disappointed Judge greatly, who would eventually imprison and even fake the death of Sanji and one day allow him to be free in East Blue on the condition that he would never ever reveal his lineage. Not that Sanji would even want to. And this time period also properly introduced us to Charlotte Lin Lin, AKA Big Mom, who was quickly portrayed as quite possibly the strongest human on the planet, with a bit of a tendency for hunger pangs that on one occasion was quelled by Jinbei, who was on the island to sever his allegiance with the Big Mom pirates in order to properly accept Luffy's invitation to join the Straw Hats. Now, Luffy and Nami, after their vicious battle with Cracker, would then encounter Sanji with his family. However, the chef refused to return to the crew as he was still being blackmailed with Zeph's life, even going so far as to escalate this matter to a full-on fight with Luffy. And in a particularly heartbreaking scene, a very tired Luffy was defeated. Although Luffy Luffy being Luffy, he then made a very stubborn decision and boldly declared that he would not eat anything until Sanji returned to the crew. After which Luffy and Nami were assailed by a small army led by Charlotte Montour, who captured and imprisoned them in Whole Cake Chateau. Some good news though, was Chopper and Carrot had managed to overpower their captors in the mirror world and forced Brule into assisting them, which would prove absolutely integral to the remainder of the arc. More very bad news though, as Brook, with the assistance of Pedro had managed to find his way into Big Mom's Poneglyph collection, which tells three of the stones, including the much needed road poneglyph. Now, under normal circumstances, this would be just super. However, Big Mom arrived to put a halt to Brook's actions, which resulted in Brook engaging in one-on-one -on -one combat with an Emperor of the Sea, and then promptly getting destroyed and becoming captured himself. More good news though, because Luffy and Nami would go on to be freed by Jinbei, a very, very welcome sight to these two straw hearts, but stubborn Luffy being stubborn, decided to head back to the spot where he told Sanji he would wait and not eat, whilst Nami and Jinbei joined Chopper and Carrot in the Mirror World, where they ultimately freed Brook thanks to using Brule's mirror powers to find him. And furthermore, after rejoining the crew, Brook opened up his usually empty skull and revealed that he had managed to take rubbings of all three Poneglyphs, thus submitting Brook as a supreme candidate for MVP of Whole Cake Island. Cutting back to Sanji now though, things aren't exactly looking up for him, as just as he had accepted his fate of marrying Pudding, he just so happens to discover that she is in fact evil and spearheading a plot to murder Sanji, as well as the rest of the Vinsmoke family, at their own wedding ceremony no less. And the reasoning is so that Big Mom can take control of all of the advanced technology of the German Kingdom, 
which is questionable because how would she know how to use any of it? But whatever, it's fine. And even though Sanji is still technically under the conditions of blackmail, he then makes the decision to rejoin Luffy, who is waiting for him in the promised spot. And after a tearful reunion, the captain and the chef once again join forces. Now, in theory, this is the point where we've actually accomplished everything we came here to do. We have the Poneglyph rubbings and we have Sanji. But things aren't quite that simple though, because the life of Zeph is still being threatened. And even though Sanji thoroughly despises his family, he realized that he could not bring himself to abandon them to their fate. And so Luffy suggests that they crash the wedding. And in order to achieve this, Jinbei has something of a cunning plan involving a figure who has popped up a fair bit at this point being Capone Gang Beige. And in case you've forgotten, Beige is a member of the worst generation, just like Luffy and Law. And as it turns out, Beige has his own grand ambitions on Whole Cake Island. And all this time, he has been plotting to assassinate Big Mom. So of course, Jinbei suggests that they go and meet with Beige to form an alliance. And so with three and a half hours until the wedding ceremony is set to begin, the two factions secretly gather to discuss how they're going to topple Big Mom's entire empire. Next time on Sagas in Minutes, we have cause for celebration as we will not only be attending a wedding ceremony, but we will be concluding the series for the time being with part two of the Yonko Saga. But what do you guys think? Please do leave your thoughts in the comments below or even join my Discord server. And if you'd like to see more videos like this, then please do go and check out some of my other content or even subscribe to the channel for more glorious One Piece business uploaded straight into your YouTube feed. But for now, this has been the Grand Line Review and I'll see you next time.